In a previous video, we tested automatic transmission fluid in the crankcase of an engine. Not only did the engine survive, but it actually seemed to help clean up the crankcase some. But I've had a lot of people ask me to test diesel in the crankcase of an engine. First off, will the engine survive? Secondly, if it does survive, will there be any damage? And finally, will it actually clean the crankcase? These are all very interesting questions. Additionally, if you found yourself in an emergency situation and you didn't have anything in the crankcase whatsoever and you had to get your vehicle or whatever it is to get to the next place, could you use diesel as an emergency oil substitute? This is a very interesting question. This is one of the reasons we're doing this video series is to see what works and what doesn't work. Well, I don't know if it will or not, but what I do know is we've got several small engines and some tests that can prove one way or the other whether or not it'll work. So let's go ahead and get this testing underway. Anytime we use a product in the crankcase of an engine, I always like to conduct a lubricity test to determine if the product provides adequate lubrication. In the past, we've tested all sorts of motor oil additives as well as 10W30 oil, and this has proven to be very effective at determining film strength. So today we'll test diesel to determine if it provides an adequate level of lubrication. The way this device works is I'll apply a little bit of diesel to the wheel race. This will spin about 800 RPMs. I'll insert a bearing in the bearing holder, and then I will apply the load on top of this wheel race without touching the device during the entire testing process for 30 seconds. After the test is over, we'll look at the bearing to see how much damage has been done. The bearing to the left is 10W30. This is a bearing I tested in a previous video. The bearing to the right is the diesel. As you can see, there's a lot more scoring on the bearing with the diesel, so clearly not a very good lubricant compared to conventional 10W30 oil. So some people use diesel as a crankcase cleaner right before changing their engine oil in their vehicles. So the way this works is they'll have four or five quarts of oil in the crankcase, they'll add a quart of diesel, and they'll allow the engine to idle for say 10, 15, 20 minutes drain everything off, add fresh oil. So during this 10 to 15 minutes is engine damage taking place. So let's find out just how much loss and lubricity there is when diesel is added to oil. The oil definitely seems a lot thinner with the diesel in it. So the bearing all on the right is 100% diesel. This is the one part diesel, four parts oil and this is the 10W30 oil by itself. As you can see, there's a little bit more damage with the one part of diesel added to the oil, but not a whole lot, so this doesn't seem like it would cause catastrophic failure in an engine or any sort of damage. This is a safety data sheet for diesel. You can see the flash point is between 126 and 152 degrees Fahrenheit, or 51.6 to 66.6 .6 degrees Celsius. Also, the boiling point is 320 to 700 degrees Fahrenheit, and the auto ignition temperature is between 490 and 545 degrees Fahrenheit. So we shouldn't have a problem with the engine catching on fire just because the auto ignition temperature is pretty high. However, what we might see is because the boiling point's only 320 degrees Fahrenheit, we might see a lot of the diesel flash off when it's running. So in a previous video, I disconnected the governor and I wired the throttle plate into a fixed position. With 10W30 in the engine, the engine spun at just a little under 3400 RPM. So it'll be interesting to see how the engine does with diesel in the crankcase. Will the internal friction increase enough that the RPMs will drop a noticeable amount or will it remain around 3400? So during the day's test, I'll also be applying a load on the engine by applying the engine brake. I've disconnected the engine stop switch, so when I apply the engine brake, the engine will continue to run with a load on it. I will only do this for about two to three minutes at a time because I don't want the flywheel to get too hot. It can do damage to it.
So this is the diesel that I drained out of the crankcase. Unfortunately, I spilled just a little bit, but what remains appears to have a little bit of a metallic color. So what I'm going to do now is run this through a coffee filter and then see if we can locate any visible metal chips. So I am seeing quite a bit of glitter inside this filter, indicating that there is some damage to the engine as a result of not having adequate lubrication. So the next test determine whether or not diesel, when added to oil, does a better job of cleaning up sludge than when using just motor oil itself. So this engine has a splash type system and so what I'm going to do is just put one bolt inside the crankcase with 10W30 detergent oil, run it for 10 minutes, and then what we're going to do is drain off a little bit of the 10W30, add one part of diesel to four parts of oil, and run it for 10 minutes with a different bolt to see which one does a better job of cleaning. I just removed the bolt from the crankcase and it looks like there's still quite a bit of sludge on this bolt. So what I do now is see how much sludge comes off on this paper towel when I rotate the thre around the threads. Okay, as you can see there's quite a bit of sludge remaining. We're going to compare this to what happens when one adds diesel to the oil. And we're going to basically drain off three ounces of oil, add three ounces of diesel, and then run this for 10 minutes. This is the bolt that had the diesel added to the motor oil. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the threads down. I can already tell you it does look a lot cleaner. This definitely did a better job compared to just plain 10W30 with detergent. This is the 10W30 that was untreated with diesel. This had the diesel. As you could tell, there just seems to be a lot more grease that was left on the bolt from the 10W30 compared to the 10W30 diesel mix. So I read and reply to just about every comment, and I'd really like to read your comments on whether or not you've used diesel in the crankcase of an engine. If you have, I'd love to hear your comments about how it's cleaned up sludge or whether or not it's caused any sort of issues. It's quite interesting today to see what happened when we ran an engine on straight diesel as far as the crankcase. That was not pretty. The engine did survive. However, it seemed to be overheating quite a bit. We had to stop the engine around the 30 minute mark to add some more diesel to the crankcase because a lot of that had evaporated off. Also, when we drained the diesel out of the crankcase and looking at the filter, there seemed to be quite a bit of metal inside that filter indicating a lot of damage. Also, we saw a couple of PSI loss on the compression test, not a good thing. So I'm not sure how many more videos this engine has in it, maybe just one or two, but not too many. This engine is just about toast. On the lubricity test, it was quite interesting to see that diesel in and of itself is not a very good lubricant. However, when mixed with oil, it does seem to do a decent job. Not a great job, but not a huge loss. So for the old timers that recommended adding a little diesel to the oil just before the, the change, it doesn't seem to be necessarily a bad idea. However, I cannot recommend doing this because anything you add to the crankcase of an engine besides what's meant to go in there, has the potential to cause damage, and I don't want anyone to damage their engines. Anyway, I really have a lot of fun doing these videos. You guys keep throwing those video ideas out there, and I'll keep putting together videos. Thanks so much for watching the video, and look forward to seeing you next time.